You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's The Voice After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's The Voice After Show. With over 27 million downloads each week, this is your home for all your After Show recaps, analysis, and interviews. This is AfterBuzz TV. I'm Christian Rosenberg with a very special edition of The Voice After Buzz. Joining me on the phone right now is a man who sang his way all the way to the finale who proved that hard work truly does pay off. I'm talking with Will Champlin right now on AfterBuzz TV. Will, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. Let me ask you, in the last 48 hours, how much sleep have you gotten? <laughs> well, not much. Um, I um, Right after the uh, Monday night's performance, I probably stayed up all night just rallying my champs, my fans to keep pushing the, the, the song, everything I do to, to the top 10, which you got to number eight. Um I've been doing it. I do that consistently with all every single download I possibly can. Um, I always keep pushing. And so yeah, I think uh, I, I haven't. Uh, that's of like before yesterday. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely had like no sleep. <laughs> well, I mean, Ad- Adam was constantly, you know, talking about throughout throughout the season how you're like the hardest working guy uh, that he, that was on The Voice. Do you feel that that was a true statement, or do you feel that everyone else worked just as hard? Do you feel like maybe there was even someone else that seemed to be putting in, in, in even more time than you, or no? You know, um, I know, <clears throat> I know that I, I, I know the natural, and you know the. Uh, I think that everybody has that very amazing natural gift and talent, and I. You know, I've fostered that a lot over the years, and, and um, you know, I think that um, within this environment, uh, being in, like performing in front of America, like every week is a is a, a high pressure environment. So, you know, it's going to kind of take a it takes a um, takes some thick skin to get through it. So, sure, I think that's what it came to. To it. it's not so much hard work, but just kind of the Hard work to to um, thicken your skin up a little bit to, to survive it. It's just a survivalist mentality I might have uh, that's kind of instilled in me. Well, um, yeah, yeah. I think actually thick skin is is a great way to describe you because you know early on in the season, you know you were you were stolen in the battle rounds and then you were stolen in the knockouts and then you ended up being Adam's last pick. You were kind of almost like the underdog. Going in all the way to the you know to the live rounds, but with that thick skin that you say you have, do you think between that and you know and you know the following that you eventually gained from that because people were you know really starting to believe in you more and more as the season went on, do you think that really helped you elevate to have as thick a skin as you were saying and get all the way to the finals? Definitely, it's been a rough ride. I mean, I I definitely had to grow on people. It wasn't like a first impression thing where I had turned four chairs or anything like that. I just kind of came in and kind of sang the song I knew, you know, and that's that's what it came down to, the blind that I do. Um, um, like the best thing. Like, I feel like I could have just got the turns, you know, for uh, <laughs> it made it kind of more about my singing than, than it was about the song, I guess, but um, that um, I completely just forgot what I was what I was at. <laughs> what, what, what were we saying? <laughs> it's all right. I know Sorry. you're on a lack of sleep. It's okay. Uh no, I was talking about like what what did the feel you know, did you really feel like kind of like an underdog and did you feel like the following oh, yeah. from being saved and all that, do you feel that helped propel you between social media and just the fans in general and then just you as a performer? Yeah, I've definitely felt like I I had to grow on people, you know. I definitely had to grow on people. It was, it was gradual. 
you know, I didn't come in with like um, uh, several thousand followers or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't come in with this, like that. I kind of, um, I had to um, just gradually grow on people. And um, and I worked it as much as I could socially. Um, it just kept growing from here on out. And, um, you know, last, uh, getting all the way to last night was like, definitely wasn't a walk in the park, well, especially when, um, I guess that, well, I had to be, this type of my work ethic and just like work hard to get to where I am today is it's not, you know, it's, it doesn't even take this kind of work to get the right album out to people and that, that, and just share your passion musically to the world and sell records. That just takes, you know, your natural gift and, and your hard work at your own music. You know, you're not competing with anybody else. You're just finding your own niche. And I think that, um, but within the context of the show, when you have, you know, 20 to 48, whatever, I mean, talented people who have their own sound or have their own vision set out to them musically, you know, that's that's what you got to really look at, I think, to stay in the game. And that's what, it, it's kind of a, it went beyond uh, having to, it's kind of like competing with the real music industry market, you know, on the real charts in the real world. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like that. Well, yeah, because, I mean, hanging out with, like, the real charts in the real, in the real world, think about it, last night, the finale, you were doing a show with Lady Gaga, Celine Dion, Paramore. I mean, it go, um, you performed with Aloe Black. I mean, yeah. and, and when you think about it, all that was really centered around you, Jackie, and Tessanne. Like, the show was you guys, and all these huge stars are there to perform for you. I mean, what is what what goes through your mind when you think of that? Correct. Yeah. Um, you know, I was I was it was it turned out really amazing. Just like the performance with me and Alpha Black. Um, I got to know that guy, uh, you know, briefly just before we performed, and it, I just kind of I knew that he's I've heard a lot of his music before. You know, the Vichy record. I know he's like just kind of been one of those guys that's been at it for years and just like just loves what he, he believes in what he's doing. You know, and I feel like. Well, this is just gonna be more perfect because, like, this is what I've been doing for years too. You know, and it's just like, um, you know, I think he's one of those people who just never stop and just like just all about the passion of music. You know, and and um, you know, I could I could definitely read that modesty out of him. You know, and, um, I kind of have that as well. You know, I, I I feel that way. You know, so couldn't have been a better performance. I mean, it was just like I think there our energy and the spirit was just there. Of um. Uh, the spirit of, of musical passion and per perseverance was, just, was was there last night. Yeah, and and obviously you know the musical passion clearly runs in your family. You know, with with your father, I found it very interesting because uh, you know at the very beginning of of the season, you know, you briefly talked about you know how your father you know perform, um you know part of the band Chicago and all of that, but. There, there are times where you'll see people on, on shows like this, if they have a family member that's been involved, you know, big time, where they bring it up a lot. You you didn't, in a way, because, I don't know, to me, like, from from my side, and please correct me if I'm wrong, it almost kind of felt like you, you know, you're honored to be, obviously, his, um, his son, but you didn't want people to just know you as, I'm the son of the guy from Chicago. You wanted to kind of create your own niche. Um, I mean, is, yeah. do, you, do you agree with that? I'll tell you what, man. I got more visibility out of this last few months, probably than my dad ever did. Like, mm -hmm. on the whole on stage with Chicago for like 30 years, I got just like, you know, my name engraved in American heads. People, the young generation who never even heard of my dad, know right. who I am now. And I think I just accomplished just a huge slam dunk. Definitely. Uh, but, and, and my dad, it's not like, that's a competition or anything with my dad or anything. It's of like, course. He's, he's probably more proud of me for, for, uh, you know, for sticking in there and actually, you know, not giving up this whole time. And, uh, you know, I believe in myself musically. I think that, uh, he doesn't really think he, he does he blocks all that out. And I think that he just, he just like super proud of me for what I've been doing mm. for, for, uh, yeah. 
know, this whole journey. You know. Sure. Uh, I I have an interesting question for you. I last week I got a chance to speak with James Wolpert, and yeah. and he and he mentioned to me that on the elimination nights of The Voice, you generally would kind of try to refuse to wear a jacket. Because you felt that if you were wearing a jacket, that kind of signified that that meant you were ready to go home. Um, is, yeah. is, um You know, what What kind of, you know, are were you, like, completely serious with that? Or is that just something you kind yeah. of were, like, playing mind games with yourself in a way? No, I was just, it was just a joke. I made, I made a joke. I'm like, I can't go out with no jacket. I can't <laughs> go up on that stage with no jacket. That means I'm about to peace out of here. And I'm like, oh, here we go. It's about to be cold outside. Uh See you guys later. Goodbye, guys. Goodbye. <laughs> you know, um, I feel like uh, I, I just I kind of made that joke in wardrobe, and then James is like, oh, that's funny. So it's like, um, I guess during the winter when it's got a little more colder in that stage, the Universal, uh-huh. I'm like, I think I need to throw something on because I don't want to be like shivering up there on stage while we're like getting awaiting our fate. You know, whether we're gonna go forward or not. So <laughs> gotcha. that's gonna be look weird in front of America. So. <laughs> I think I threw like a sweater on or something. I don't know. <laughs> sweater, a scarf, some mittens, whatever's needed. <laughs> yeah, I think I was gonna have to think like maybe like a like a you know one of those big jackets that like um have all the foam in it. You know what I'm saying? It makes it just like makes it bigger. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Is was there one specific performance? If you were to just pick one throughout the entire season that you felt really defined who Will Champlin the performer is, if there was just one to narrow down. Yeah, and it might not even be the kind of record I would make right now. Uh But the energy and the soul and the passion, the spirit and the connection that um, was, that lived in the song at last, Mm -hmm. several weeks ago, was, that was the one that put me on the map right there. Even though it's not the kind of record I would personally make, it's sure. just the connection of that was 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 um, just topped it off right there. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it really shows just like you know how you know powerful of of, of a singer that that you could be because obviously you know this finale you were dealing with you know you had a couple powerhouses you were dealing with in, in Jackie and Tessan, but you you kind of proved especially from that moment with that last is like hey. I can I can lay out the power just like anyone else on this show. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I uh that song gave me a lot of room to be myself, you know. Definitely. Uh was there one specific piece of advice that your coach Adam gave you that stuck out more than anything else? No, other than the fact that just own just own it on stage and just block everything out. Just pretend it's a concert. You, you're giving people, you know, you want to give them their, give them what they deserve. Mm-hmm. Just want to give them great music. It's just like, shouldn't even ever look at this like competition. You should just look at this like, you know, you're entertaining people. Sure. What, and that's um, the best way to, oh, go ahead. to really just, what? I'm sorry. I, I was, I cut you off. I didn't realize you're still going. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. It's, it's the best way to uh, loosen up and, and give your all. Like, that's the best advice he, I think that I could have got just overall because, I mean, I, I know how to carry a tune. I mean, that's that's not something that could be – I mean, I know how to, you know, get into the emotion of a song. That's, there's there's certain things that came out of your coach, but mm-hmm. I think that um, there's there's little details that – I think that the things that can be coached are just, like, details per, you know, song-by-song song basis and just really how that – the best way you can – Give yourself the biggest chance to sell, sell it to the audience and sell it to America. And then, you know, of course, another another thing with coaching is just like song advice. You know, mm-hmm. being able to pick the right song. I think that's another important thing of being a great coach is to, um, is uh, you know really cl- carefully selecting the right right material. Sure. It's gonna propel propel the artist forward. So I think it's a, I think that he got me this far. I mean, I think I, I trusted his word on a lot of the, a lot of songs, and I mean, there's one that that um we we just kind of had to um rethink um, mm-hmm. that I I knew it was wasn't gonna work, but 
cool. You know, we, we just kind of worked that out, you know. And then it ended up being uh, Hey Brother by Vichy, so. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody's going to have a fault. Everybody's going to have an off night sometimes. It's happened. Sure. Um, I had, like, one or two. Mm-hmm. But I definitely uh, came back and, you know, came back with a vengeance, so. What did the um? What did Adam tell you once the show went off the air last night? Like, did he? What did he say to you when he like ran and like and hugged you afterwards? Yeah, he just he just said, man, you know, he's like, I'm, I'm proud of you no matter what, you know, um, you, you came this far, bro. Mm. It's just, um, you know, I think he he just he just said there, he's, he's proud of me. He's just like he's like, man, you you made, you made it this far. You made it all the way. He took it to the end. Well, you, 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 you definitely did. You definitely brought it to the end. And, and now, as you were kind of saying, the entire world knows who you, who you are and like the incredibly talented singer that you are. What do you think? I, I know it's literally less than 24 hours from the finale, but what do you think is, is next for you? What's next for me yeah. is um, getting my business together, getting, getting, seeing what is on the table, mm-hmm. publishing-wise. Um, record uh, offer wise, um, and just getting back to the, just getting um, you know, getting organized, getting very much organized on what I'm going to do next with setting up co-writes, setting up um, um, any kind of tours or um, shows and stuff. But coming up with a band name, uh, getting the co-writes down, um getting back into the my studio, getting my beats going on, getting my tracks going on and, and just rocking out, getting you know, build song by song. As rocking and as powerful and as <laughs> anthemic and epic as I possibly can. This is this is I'm gonna go basically you know, this the album I'm doing right now is is a basically a anywhere between black keys and um Fun. Um, mm-hmm. Al- Alex Claire with some electro elements, uh, dubstep and stuff. That and sounds I, I pretty a lot awesome. Of programming and stuff on uh, Ableton Live. Um, you know, I'm just really into production. You know, I've always been into sequencing and doing doing beats and tracks and stuff, and you know, electronic composing. You know, um, uh, but then, you know, then again, I like to lay you know real organic instruments over that stuff. You know, like. You know, if you see my studio room, it's, you know, my Pro Tools rig, MPC, and all the digital stuff, mm-hmm. uh, you know, all samples and stuff. But but then, you know, I got a whole guitar rack, you know, with, like, you know, a couple guitars, banjo, uh, dobro, and, like, uh, lap steel, and, uh, and my, my Fender Rhodes, my dad's Fender Rhodes, which, of course, has a broken key on it right now. <laughs> uh, um, and my vintage clavinet, so you know, I, I definitely... Very um, just diverse in in what I like to, and I'm very diverse in and uh, I just like to be very thoughtful of what I of what I put on to take uh, and what I put into people's ears because um, you know you just want to give them the best music that they deserve and uh, and I'm very you know it's you know it's just very. Uh, just gotta be in the right vibe in the right moment. And I always, always try. It's like a photographer trying to catch the right uh, angle and the right uh, picture that he wants to get to create a, a great um, um, photo. You know what I'm saying? So Definitely. that's what making a record is is really about. Uh, absolutely, and and just just the way you were describing that, I mean that that truly really shows what Adam was yeah. talking about throughout the season and how hard work and how much of a perfectionist you are because you don't want to just throw some album out there. You want it to be the best thing that it can yeah. possibly be, which I think is fantastic, and I cannot wait to hear it. And I'm sure all of your champs that follow you on Twitter, as you've named them. Absolutely, uh, yeah. <laughs> at, at Will I would, Champlin. I would, here's, here's what I would say. You know, I, yeah. I know that I got a lot of flack for being supposedly in my head, with it, but I, I think that, those, that, that to me I would say that that was me trying to capture the the most emotion driven um the, this, the, that was me basically trying to capture the best emotion into the song and the best originality into the song I possibly could to you know to really make people believe it so I think that's what it what it came down to 
Well, well, you you definitely made all of America believe, and that's why you got all the way to finale. Will I I can't thank you enough for you know taking the time. I'm I know you're exhausted from the especially these last few days. Um, so thank you so much for you know taking the time to talk with us today on After Buzz, and of course uh, you can be followed on Twitter at Will Champlin, and I cannot wait to. Um, get my hands on this album when it when it's all ready to come out. So, uh, Will, Absolutely. Will, thank you so much uh, for taking time. Have a happy holiday, and um, and Absolutely. I can't and I can't wait to hear what comes out from you in the future, man. Definitely. Um, well, um, I think uh, Serena PR is like going to make sure I have you know all you guys' contact too, so I could definitely uh, you know let you guys know when. Uh, when I have something uh, ready, I definitely would love to tell you guys. You know, let you guys, uh, um, let you guys uh, know as soon as I have something. Uh, you know, finished product. Oh, sure. oh, dude! When you got the finished product, um, we're gonna find a way to get you in the studio here so you can perform live and everything. Because that'd be amazing. That'd be that would be so awesome, man. So you know, uh, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna keep. You know, I have a list, and, and of course, your info is definitely gonna be on there. And I'm definitely gonna be reaching out. Absolutely, and 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 and, and 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 I will tweet at you as well, so so you can you can so awesome, hit me up on on Twitter. So again, this is Will Champlin, ladies and gentlemen. You can fo- find him on Twitter at Will Champlin. You could always follow me on Twitter at C Rosie VOC. And for all your AfterBuzz news and gossip, you can follow AfterBuzz on Twitter at AfterBuzz TV. Once again, Will Champlin, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. I'm Christian Rosenberg, and we will see you guys later. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 